Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is a type of arrhythmia, an irregular and typically fast heartbeat that can cause blood clots in the heart. Stroke, heart failure, and other heart-related problems are all increased by atrial fibrillation. Do you want to know more about atrial fibrillation? What are the causes of atrial fibrillation? How is it very dangerous for your health? And how does it lead to heart stroke? Let's find all answers to these questions today. This is Scope Care, best guidance spot for patients and caregivers of all ages. In this video, we'll talk about atrial fibrillation, its causes and prevention in detail. So watch this video till the end, and if you'd like to be a part of Scope Care, subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Let's get started on our topic. Patients have described their experiences as when I'm moving things up my stairs or bending down, my heart skips beats and feels like it's pounding on my chest wall. I felt sick to my stomach, lightheaded and weak. I had a pounding heart and felt as if I were gasping for air. I didn't have any symptoms at all. My atrial fibrillation was diagnosed during a routine checkup. I'm glad I discovered it so quickly. So what happens during atrial fibrillation? During atrial fibrillation, the upper chambers of the heart, called the atria, beat chaotically and irregularly, out of sync with the lower chambers, also known as ventricles. Many persons with AFib do not have any symptoms. AFib can also induce rapid, pounding heartbeats, shortness of breath, and weakness. Atrial fibrillation attacks might come and go, or they can last a long time. Although AFib is rarely fatal, it is a severe medical condition that needs prompt treatment to avoid stroke. Therapy to reset the heart rhythm, medication, and catheter operations to block defective heart signals are all possible treatments for atrial fibrillation. A person with atrial fibrillation might also have an atrial flutter, which is a cardiac rhythm disorder. However, atrial flutter is a different arrhythmia than atrial fibrillation, but the treatment is quite similar to AFib. Let's discuss the symptoms of atrial fibrillation in detail. AFib can be controlled using two major methods. One method, known as rate control, includes taking drugs to maintain a regular heart rate. The other, known as rhythm control, includes using medicine or minimally invasive surgery to return the heart to its regular beat. Doctors have always started with rate control because the medications used for rhythm control have more concerning side effects. However, according to a new study, people who started with rhythm control instead of rate control immediately after their diagnosis had fewer strokes and were less likely to die of heart disease. Those who do have atrial fibrillation symptoms might have signs and symptoms such as sensations of fast heartbeats, palpitations, chest pain, dizziness, fatigue, reduced ability to exercise, shortness of breath, and weakness. Atrial fibrillation can be occasional paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. AFib symptoms come and go, lasting anything from a few minutes to many hours. Symptoms might last up to a week, and bouts can happen multiple times. It's possible that the symptoms will go away on their own. Some people who have AFib regularly require treatment. AFib episodes can last from a few hours to several days, or they might last months or even years. The impact on people's lives vary considerably. After only five minutes in AFib, some persons are paralyzed by symptoms. Others aren't aware they have the disease until it's detected by accident during a normal checkup. Persistent atrial fibrillation. Persistent atrial fibrillation occurs when the heart rhythm does not return to normal on its own. Cardioversion or pharmacological treatment may be used to restore and maintain a normal heart rhythm in people who have AFib symptoms. Long-standing persistent. Atrial fibrillation that has been present for more than a year is known as long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation. Permanent. The abnormal heartbeat cannot be recovered in this type of atrial fibrillation. Therefore, medications are required to keep the heart rate under control and prevent blood clots. 
So what are the causes of atrial fibrillation? Knowing how the heart normally beats can help you understand the causes of AFib. The heart is divided into four chambers. Two upper chambers, called atria, and two lower chambers, known as ventricles. The sinus node is a collection of cells located in the upper right chamber of the heart. The natural pacemaker of the heart is the sinus node. It is responsible for generating the signal that initiates each heartbeat. The signal passes from the sinus node via the two upper heart chambers in a regular cardiac rhythm. Next, the signal travels through the atrioventricular or AV node, which connects the upper and lower chambers. Your heart squeezes or contracts in response to the movement of the signal, bringing blood to your heart and body. The signals in the upper chambers of the heart are chaotic in atrial fibrillation. The higher chambers shake or quiver as a response. The AV node is therefore swamped with signals trying to reach the ventricles, the lower chambers of the heart. This leads to a rapid and erratic heartbeat. In atrial fibrillation, the heart rate can range from 100 to 175 beats per minute. A heart rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute is considered normal. Structural issues with the heart most commonly cause atrial fibrillation. Coronary artery disease, heart attack, congenital heart defects, which is a heart abnormality, which is present at birth, heart valve difficulties, high blood pressure, and lung disorders are all possible causes of atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation also causes physical stress due to surgery, pneumonia, or other illnesses, previous heart surgery, sick sinus syndrome, sleep apnea, thyroid disease, and viral infections. Even though some people who have atrial fibrillation have no known heart problems or heart damage. Wait, friends, do you like this video so far? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, remember to like and subscribe to the Scope Care to see more informative content in the future. Now let's explore the risk factors of atrial fibrillation. The following factors can raise the risk of atrial fibrillation or AFib. Number one, age. The older a person is, the higher the risk of developing atrial fibrillation. Number two, cardiovascular disease. Atrial fibrillation is more common among those who have heart diseases such as heart valve abnormalities, congenital heart disease, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, a history of heart attack, or heart surgery. Number three, high blood pressure. High blood pressure can raise the risk of atrial fibrillation, especially if it isn't effectively controlled with lifestyle changes or medications. Number four, thyroid disease. Thyroid disorders can cause cardiac rhythm problems such as arrhythmias, including atrial fibrillation in some persons. Number five, other chronic health conditions. Atrial fibrillation is more common in people who have diabetes, metabolic syndrome, chronic renal disease, lung disease, or sleep apnea, along with other chronic disorders. Number six, consuming alcoholic drinks. Drinking alcohol can cause an episode of atrial fibrillation in some persons. Binge drinking raises the danger even more. Number seven, obesity. Obese people have an increased chance of acquiring atrial fibrillation. Number eight, family history. Some families have a higher risk of atrial fibrillation. But what is the link between atrial fibrillation and stroke? AFib releases a person's risk of having a stroke. AFib was linked to a five-fold higher risk of ischemic stroke when usual stroke risk variables were considerable. AFib is responsible for one out of every seven strokes. Strokes caused by AFib problems are usually more severe than strokes caused by other causes. Strokes occur when a blood clot or fatty deposit in the blood vessel lining called plaque impede blood flow to the brain. So what is the best prevention of atrial fibrillation? Healthy lifestyle choices can help prevent atrial fibrillation and minimize the risk of heart disease. Here are a few fundamental heart-healthy recommendations. Eat a well-balanced diet. Don't smoke. Do frequent exercise and maintain a healthy weight. Caffeine and alcohol should be avoided or limited. 
Manage your stress levels, such as high levels of anxiety and anger, which can disrupt your heart rhythm. It's important to remember, too, that the most serious risk of AFib is an increased chance of stroke. That's why, despite other treatments, including ablation, most people with AFib should also take anti-clotting medicines. Unfortunately, most primary care doctors are hesitant to prescribe rhythm control medications. If you've been diagnosed with AFib, see a cardiologist to ensure you're getting the best treatment possible to reduce your symptoms, drug side effects, and stroke risk. It is estimated that 12.1 million people in the United States will have AFib in 2030. In 2019, AFib was mentioned on 183,321 death certificates and was the underlying cause of death in 26,535 of those deaths. People of European descent are more likely to have AFib than African Americans because the number of AFib cases increases with age and women generally live longer than men, more women than men experience AFib. So guys, we are going to wrap our video. Please don't ignore. Take your health seriously because health comes first. Do you have any questions regarding atrial fibrillation? Let us know in the comment section. Stay connected to Scope Care for more interesting content and updates on a healthy lifestyle by liking and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video. Keep shining. Bye.